And welcome back to Calgary. A reminder, first and foremost, to play Safeway's Million Dollar Score and Win. If any Flames player scores five times in tonight's game, then Randy Gebhardt of Calgary could win one million dollars. Shop and swipe at Safeway. You could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. We're set to go for period number one, the Blue Jackets and the Flames. Here's Rob and Charlie. Well, the Calgary Flames start a three-game homestand against the Blue Jackets who find themselves in the middle of a five-game road swing. Let's take a look at our starting goalies brought to you by Intact Insurance. Your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker How about Intact Insurance Company. Sergei Bobrovsky, the reigning Vesna Trophy winner in the National Hockey League, but repeating, proving to be a tough task. His goals against have ballooned almost by a goal so far this season. Now, Reto Berra picked up his second career win Monday in Winnipeg. Both have come on the road. Both he faced 44-plus shots, and both wins came in extra time. There's Mike Camilleri, continues to be the offensive catalyst for Calgary. 11 points in 11 games, and he had a critical power play goal Monday night to get the Flames going in Winnipeg. Columbus 7 0 loss in Edmonton last night. Ouch. Trying to rebound. Ouch is right. That hurts. Polino to the front of the net. Puck doesn't make it through. Brody cuts it off. It's played ahead. Camilleri across the line. Looking for Stempniak. Camilleri in that one tipped away by Umberger. Stage and in. Stempniak as well. Puck taken away by Felino. Umberger hits the line and he'll dump it in. Todd Richards, head coach of the Jackets last night, saying he didn't think some of his players gave him a full effort in the third period, accused him of perhaps of quitting and didn't back away from those comments this morning. You have to find some way to motivate your team, and when you get beat 7-0, especially the type of play that Columbus plays, especially very tight defensive hockey, you really know you've made mistakes. Off the blocker of Barra, that one's into the seats. The keys to the game are brought to you by Budweiser. Great games are waiting. You know there was one coach really unhappy with his team, and there's going to be another coach that really remind them of the team, beware of a wounded opponent, because they came in here with a big bunch of hurt this morning after getting spanked pretty good last night. And for the Blue Jackets, going on what you just said with Todd Richards, he's a very proud coach. He wants his players to redeem themselves. Jackets are a little banged up, as are the Calgary Flames, but they won't have the services of Brandon Dubinsky, who got hurt in that game at Edmonton. Not in the lineup tonight. Of course, the Flames have been without their captain, Mark Giordano, and Curtis Glenn Cross for the last couple of weeks. It's the Blue Jackets, Charlie, in a weird road trip. They start in Ottawa. It's a five-game Canadian tour, played in Edmonton, playing Calgary. They'll go to Vancouver on Friday and then end in Toronto next week. We've seen a few of the teams come through Calgary in that same type of scenario. San Jose uh, did the, the same thing where they end up playing uh, here, Edmonton, Vancouver, back to Chicago, and then back home to San Jose. So it's, uh, they say it's the computers that arranges all this stuff. 6,200 kilometers of travel. Puck tapped in. Shane O'Brien back for it. Hit along the boards by Boone Jenner. McKeaton, point shot, goes wide, bounces off the net. Anisimov gets it down low, shot kicked away. Atkinson was the one who took it for the Jackets. Hoodler tied up along the boards. Again, Atkinson misses with that opportunity. And Anisimov will chase it back in behind the net. Jenner trying to tie up Ladislav Schmid. And Reto Bear has lost his stick. He was using a player's momentarily. Pitches that to the corner and gets his back. Flames intercept the puck off the bench. Lance Bowman, nice move around to Keaton, but Bobrovsky got a foot on it. Weidman, little trouble controlling it. That one goes off the stick and into the mesh. Lance Bowman feeling it right now. He's feeling good about himself. Got the shorthanded goal in Winnipeg right here. Good job of hustle of McGratton to get out of the offensive zone so it's not offside. Didn't get quite all he wanted on that backhand. As Nikitin, the defenseman, got the stick involved, but uh, Lance Bohm was a big part of this fourth line, the energy line, uh, for Bob Hartley. And with his style of play, he can move anywhere up and down the floor. And Boma wins the draw, but it's skilly for the Jackets as he fell on that play. Now towards net knockdown, Boma has it for Calgary. 
Bowman dumps it in. He's going to head off. Jackets retain control. 2-1 of the shots early in this one in favor of Columbus. They fired just 14 on net in that loss in Edmonton last night. Butler bounces it in. Nikita will pick it up. He's trailed on the play by Stajan, but the Blue Jackets get it out. And Johansson to R.J. Umberger. Into the middle, and Felino forced to the corner. Backtrack by Mike Camilleri. Murray around the boards. It's going to come back to James Wisniewski. Into the middle, shot by Johansson. Knocked down, and the Flames clear it. Mentioned before, Brandon Dubinsky not in the lineup for the Blue Jackets. Neither is Marion Gabra. Johansson going to the net. Had some room as Barrett committed on one side, but the Flames clogged up the lane. And it's Matt Stajan with the puck. Crisscrossing Jones behind him. Play comes out, so he runs will have to retreat. This gives the puck right back to Columbus. Much different style of play coming out of Columbus and this uh, tonight. And this is what we expect, expected the way they play on the road. They're very tight checking, keeping the puck going a lot to north to south, and just making the basic simple plays along the boards. Colborn pass intercepted. Turnaround shot by the former Flame. Como bounces to the corner. Chris Russell has the puck, takes a look up, ice finds his partner, T.J. Brody. Bob Hartley changing two of his defense pairings in that game against Winnipeg. Russell now with Brody and Weidman playing with Butler. Talking to Hartley, very happy with the way both partnerships worked out in that game. Now Como bumping with Hoodler. Puck squirts to the corner, Berchi after it. Berchi assists in three consecutive games, avoids a big hit along the wall. And the puck tipped back in by Letestu. Russell, the former jacket himself, has the puck behind the Calgary net. This is Schmid. Up to Hoodler. Berchi. Back to Ladislav Schmid. Now in the corner, here's Brody with the puck. Tipped in, Hoodler. Looking for Berchi. Get around, Murray cuts to the net, loses the puck. Wisniewski back to the point, but not out. Kept in by Shane O'Brien. Hoodler to O'Brien with room, shoots, just missed. Shane O'Brien looking for his first as a flame, didn't miss by much. Monaghan around the board, speed is there. He'll play it back in behind the Columbus net. Boma comes over. The puck picked up by Anisimov. Lance Boma caught a piece of Anisimov. Boma flying to start this game. It's amazing what a little offensive success will do to one's confidence. The opportunity, more ice time, and get results. Uh, that's definitely a good recipe for, for a good, confident young player. Up through the air by Wisniewski. Weidman knocking it down. Felino trying to get around. Weidman, and he's drawn a penalty as Weidman catching a piece of Nick Felino. Get an oil change by December 15th and get a free gift. Michelin Hybrid Wiper Blades. Get your coupon at MrLube.com. In between what to do and what not to do, Dennis Weidman trying to handle that puck with his hand, dropped it. Fleno, perfect timing by the left winger to get to that puck as it hits the ice and had momentum going his way. And that force. Weidman to have to grab and, and take the interference call as he was going around him. So first opportunity on the power play for Todd Richards and his Blue Jackets. Columbus come in with the seventh best road power play at 20%. They were 0 for 1 in Edmonton last night, but on Sunday, they were 3 for 5 in a win over Ottawa. Calgary get the puck, they'll just fire it down the ice. We mentioned some of the players that are out of the lineup and they're big power play type of guys, uh, especially Gabrick and Dubinsky, who was out after last night's minor injury. Barrett playing it around the big glass. It hits Johansson. He'll play it back to the point. Jack Johnson. A little give and go with Fetter Tootin into the middle for Felino. Back up top to Jack Johnson. Johansson. Stutter step, has it along the boards, down low, side of the net. And it was taken away by the Flames, but they can't clear. Johansson into the middle, Felino sets for the shot, no. Jack Johnson fires it over top of the net. I'm sure Barris saw it, a lot of traffic in front of the Flame net miner. A minute and ten to go in this power play for Columbus. 
Johansson to Johnson. Oh, what a stop by Barra. He went around the world with the pads. You won't see that every day. A younger, more athletic, uh, Martin Brodeur saved. Definitely did the whole circle. Shot wide by the Blue Jackets. Calgary, get it, and they'll fire it down the ice. We well, look at that one opportunity, Matt stage and couldn't get it out, and it just ended up on the stick of the Blue Jackets, and they were able to move that puck around quite easily, and it came up with that big, huge save. 30 seconds to go in this power play for Columbus. Stolen, Michael Backlund trying to gain ground on Wisniewski. Backlund gets it deep, puck slips off his stick, and the Jackets get it back. Here's the rookie, Ryan Murray. Jenner, hard off the boards. Atkinson coming over to try and get it, but it comes right back out. With just seven seconds to go in the minor to Dennis Weidman, and Red O'Bear has got this building in a buzz. Huge save for him. And we talk about emotion of uh, Columbus coming in here after getting a beat 7 nothing. But you also look at the emotional win um, by the Flames in Winnipeg. They've got to find a way to recapture that type of enthusiasm. Calgary now one for one on the penalty kill. And let's take a look at this because you won't see this every day. Huge save. You're down and out. Blue Jackets moving around very quickly. All the way across. Double pad. Gets that leg right out. Kicks it. And the timing not only of the slide across, but the kick. That's more Pele than Brodeur, don't you think? That's a bicycle kick. Over the top bicycle, gets himself back up. In from Switzerland. I'm not sure I've Those seen young any. players do a lot of soccer over there. I, I don't think I've seen anything like that since John Garrett and the Minnesota Fighting St. Days in the WHA. That kind of goes Unbelievable. Weidman in the corner. Have fun, of course, at our, the expense of our good friend. Johnny G has the puck brought in by Berchi. To the middle, Hoodler can't get to it. Track it down along the boards, but Jackets get it out. Good start for Columbus, who found themselves down early 3-0 to Edmonton last night. Flames a little bit more methodical at this point. Russell tipping the head to Brody, but right on top of him is Umberger. Russell. Berchi picks it up. He's back in, out to center. Heading off for a change. He's picked up Nikitin. Thumberger, nice move at the line, kicks it ahead. Felino shoots, scores! Nick Felino, and it's 1 0 Columbus. Boy, this had goal written all over it, the way that puck was mishandled just inside the blue line by both teams or right at the split second. But the Blue Jackets were able to get control of it. Right here, end up losing the puck, lose an edge. And then there's the quick shot. Looks like it might have went off the left ankle of Brody. Right there and changed direction up into the top corner. But Umberger makes the play. Camilleri loses an edge. Stage and misses the puck. And the Blue Jackets get a quick hard shot by Felino, and it definitely hit the left ankle of T.J. Brody. Well, Felino picks up his fifth of the year, and the Jackets grab a 1-0 lead. Calgary in the last two games has scored first. It won't be the case in this one. They have to find a way of answering back. Bobrovsky leaving it. Two loses it. Stajan going to play it far side, looking for Mike Camilleri. Two gets it back. His pants out to center. Bounces away from Johansson. Brody with him. Ducks away from Atkinson. Slides it ahead to T.J. Galliardi. It's shuffled back by Stempniak. He loses it. Picked up by Anisimov. Right now the Jackets responding to whatever their coach told them before the game because they've come out and they are in control of this first period. We'll throw in there a little bit of uh, not having the intensity that the uh, Flames thought they were going to have. Also a couple missed passes which in their defensive zone especially, which has given the Blue Jackets more opportunity to keep that offensive play going. Joe Colburn gets the puck behind the net. To the point, Ladislav Schmidt. Too hard for O'Brien, but he gets it down low, and it's going to come to Galliardi. P.J. Galliardi, a goal and an assist in the 4-3 win by Calgary on October 4th in Columbus. Jones back to the point. O'Brien. Back to David Jones. Shoots. That one's tipped on the way through, and it just missed the far side. 
As Bobrovsky, somewhat helpless on the play, but it went wide. Big Joel Colburn standing in front of the net, and that's the key to that line with Galliardi and with Jones and Colburn using their size getting to the front of the net. Shane O'Brien. Cross ice. Ryan McGratton off the blocker of Bobrovsky. Boma slaps it. It hits Backlund. Puck squirts free. Bull can't get it out. Calgary keeping it in. It bounced off McGratton out to center. Polino from Umberger and Nikita Nikita is the line on the first Columbus goal. As Nikita now with eight points in 12 games lifetime against Calgary. Defenseman loves to play against the Flames. Especially as of late, the last two seasons has put up some big numbers. And guess which team he scored his first National Hockey League goal against? I probably would be the one he's facing tonight. Calgary Flames. Weidman can't get to it back. Can't get it by Letestu. Now Weidman will come up the other side. This Weidman in Winnipeg. Played just under 22 minutes. His lowest ice total of the season. Need back to get it. Shots are 4-2 in favor of Columbus. Polino with the lone goal. Jackets up by one here in the first period. Well, whatever skating Columbus didn't do last night, they're definitely doing it here tonight. Hoodler a long shot. And that one bounces back out in front, but it comes to Como. Off the glass. This one trickles all the way down to Reto Berra. Schmid to Berchi. Tutin has it, and... He heads back up the ice. Ryan Johansson. Nice moves into Calgary's end, and a backhander just over top of the net. One-year-old from Vancouver putting on the moves there. Camilleri, long shot. That one goes wide. Not a lot of whistles so far here in the first period. Stajan trying to get it out in front. Wesniewski down, knocks it away. Stajan back after it. Johansson. Behind the net, it's picked up by Feder Tutin. This pass by Umberger, no icing. And Reto Berra will come out, set it up for Chris Russell. Both teams making changes. It seems the Flames have settled down a little bit to getting some more plays going into the offensive zone. It's all about puck control when you're playing games like this. Zanuski tied up with Colbert. Nisimov in as well. Jones there for Calgary. Knocked away from Galliardi, and Cam Atkinson jumps on it. The speedster in the Calgary end, shot blocked. Nisimov looking for it, taken away by Galliardi up to Colborn. With some room, Joe Colborn. Cross ice, Jones. He'll play it back to the middle. No play to make there. Colborn pushed by Savard. Knocked down, and Nisimov comes in. Has it for the jacket, squirts free. Ryan Murray with it. Atkinson hits center, he'll backhand it in, and again, both teams making changes. Broken stick's been down there for about 10 minutes, there hasn't been a whistle. Believe it or not, nearing just five minutes remaining in this first period is gone by quickly. Savard, over to Nikitin. There's Blake Como into Calgary territory, shoots into the glove of Barra. And he will hang on. Nick Foligno has the only goal here in the first period. Columbus leads 1-0. Visit to Winnipeg for Calgary. They just got back in the league three seasons ago, but Calgary got a rare shootout win on the road in Winnipeg on Monday. Charlie, and you know, they hadn't had one in two seasons. Do not win a lot of shootouts. Don't play in a lot of shootouts. Just the uh, 27th all-time win. 21 upcoming on the road and 71 shootouts in the Carolina team has the least amount of opportunities in the shootout. When it comes down to playoff and close to playoff time, those extra points are so important. 16 shooters, that's the longest shootout of the season so far in the National Hockey League. Here is the basket of half-eaten zucchini sticks from the win known as Money Monday. Pick your winners today with pools. Nick Foligno with the only goal. Columbus up by one. The shots are 5-2, Charlie, and, and the Flames have been plagued with slow first periods at home. Slow starts uh, and other teams scoring first. That's the 11th time this, this season uh, that the opposing team has scored first. Camilleri back to the point. This is Brody. Here's Camilleri. Brody's knocked down by Foligno. Camilleri gets a shot and a stop. Bobrovsky. 
Stajan has the puck taken away. Stepniak after. Stajan in behind the net. He'll be chased out by Jack Johnson. Puck knocked down. Better team just used the glove, got it out of the air, got the puck back, but can't get it by Russell. Comes out in front. Johansson's there, and now the Jackets are able to clear. The goal scorer dumps it in. Felino will head off. Brody back to get it. TJ Brody gives it away. Johansson. Fortunately, the Jackets making a line change. Brody doesn't see it. Atkinson's there. Bear has got his glove down. Everybody around the puck. Not sure it was ever quite covered, but the official lost sight. Calgary down by a goal in the first period. It's Tellus Flames Hockey. Tellus presents hashtag score with optic. Share your favorite photo on Instagram or Twitter. Hashtag score with optic. You have a chance to win an optic TV and Samsung prize pack valued at $12,000 or more tickets to an upcoming Flames home game. Visit Tellus.com slash hockey for details and to view entries. Face off down to the Calgary end. Michael Backlund out to take it with Anisimov. Puck dug free by Calgary, but he comes back to the point. Wisniewski in a glove save by Boma. That one stung him. He's going to head off. Chipped in. Brian McGratton after it. The physical imposing play there by McGratton on Murray. Butler will play it back in. Bobrovsky leaving it behind the net. Okay, Bobrovsky. Pulled for the second time this season. Last year in his business season, he was pulled just twice all year long. Butler. Back down low. was Wisniewski gains it. It's played out to center. Right back to Chris Butler. Off the board. Atkinson in the way. Atkinson trying to dig it free. The Jackets get it back. Out shooting Calgary 5-3 in the first period. Ryan Murray onto the stick of Latestu. He goes wide, and that one is deflected by Butler. Up into the mesh as the Jackets have a 1 0 lead here in the first. It's Tellus Flames Hockey. The radio 960 The Fan is where you can catch the Flames warm up pregame show one hour before every Calgary game. Hosted by Pat Steiner. That's Boma getting a little bit. Well, hey, how about a lot of ice as he gets that uh, catching glove out to make the save? Unfortunately for him, he turned his hand open right there. Good position. But he turned the open hand where there's really no protection at all and took the Wisniewski shot right off the palm. Calgary had a season high 36 block shots against Winnipeg. They're second in the National Hockey League in that category coming into action tonight. Savard back to get him. Skips by Nikita. McKenzie will chop it down the ice. And a race for Galliard. He's going to have to hustle as Latestu is closing on him. It's a guy that had a, a really good game the last two times these clubs played back on October 4th, TJ Galliard. Very aggressive skater when he gets the open ice. He's a pretty good Movember mustache going also. He leads the way. Two shots and five block shots in Winnipeg. Flames down by a goal here in the first period to Columbus. Calgary trying to win back-to-back -back games for only the second time this season. Wide of his own end. Right up the middle looking for Monaghan. By him. Turned over. Here comes Johansson. Shot. Kicked away by Bear. Rebound. Was going to Felino, but unfortunately Sven Berchi was there for Calgary. Seeing a lot of those low hard shots, uh, especially against the, today's modern goaltender, making sure there's a play off the pad. Amalari long shot. Save made by Bukowski. You made a great point, I thought, in that Winnipeg game about teams now are going to be really testing Reto Barra, shooting from all over. Seeing a little more of that tonight as well. Stepniak along the wall. Shot kicked away by Bobrovsky. Stajan has it. Lost it momentarily. Comes to the middle and it's Johnson with the puck. He'll tip it ahead. Stepniak knocks it down. He'll gain the line. Has to squeeze by Tootin. Atkinson after. Gives it away to Stajan. Back to Stepniak. Pucks in the crease. And Bobrovsky will fall on it. Getting a lot of defensive help tonight. Bobrovsky is. If you start looking at some of their the bigger defensemen. Johnson Tootin using their size 
and mobility to get to the front of the net and they're really not seeing a lot of second or third opportunities for the Calgary Flames once they get to the front of the net. Take a look at the Blue Jackets netminders in back-to-back -back situations this year. They certainly have done their part to help their club. Jones, shot, Berchi fighting for it. It squeezes free and here comes Boone Jenner with Atkinson. Wyden turns Jenner in to force the issue. Ladislav Schmid with it. But bounces over top of the net. Weidman was there to knock it back below the goal line. Atkinson out in front and another block. Weidman stepping in front of that. No icing as Wisniewski will saunter back to pick it up. Right off of the Weidman's right leg. But before that, uh, keeping your eye on the puck and being involved in play really saved uh, that puck from coming over the top of the net. And Weidman watched it, knocked it back out of harm's way. Testu passes it back to the far side. There's Two one there. There. Russell trying to get it by Mark Letestu. He turns. This one comes back to Toot. Toot to Letestu. There's Como. Not really keeping them to the outside at this point. Hoodler knocked down. Monaghan comes over. Jackets get it. It comes back to the point. Better Toot. Shot goes wide. Waiting for Johnson. Quickly back down low. Letestu looking for Como. Back up to Johnson on the backhand. He'll play it along the boards. Brody trying to intercept it. He gets body position on Mark Letestu. Now squeezes away from Como. Russell to Monaghan. Out to center. It's bounced off Camilleri. And on Johnson. Camilleri catches a piece of him. Hoodler's there as well. Stajan comes over, but the shot hit by Camilleri. Ten seconds to go in the first period. Jackets up by a goal. Schmid. Has to be careful. Johansson gets to the puck. Umberger takes a swipe at it. It goes wide. And that will do it as Columbus leads 1-0 after 20. This period brought to you by the redesigned 2014 Toyota Tundra. Tough enough for any project. Well, Jeff Merrick, the Flames wanted to avoid a slow start. The Jackets wanted a quick one. They got it. one nothing. They lead Calgary after the first. Welcome back to Calgary. Only one goal in period number one. It belongs to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Hence, they have a one nothing advantage as we get set for the second stanza. We're joined by now the Calgary Sun columnist and our hockey analyst with Flames Hockey, Eric Francis. Well, Brett Olbera provided us those highlight reel saves, one tonight. But he's providing us with a glimpse into the future, or at least the Flames are taking a long, hard look at what this guy's all about. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they know what they have in Red O'Bara, and I'm not even sure if he knows exactly what he can bring at the NHL level. But they're going to be watching very closely all year long. Now, tonight is a great example of some real highlight reel saves. That one there was pretty nice. This one here, I would argue, is already an early candidate for save of the year in the National Hockey League. Yeah, show it as many times as we can, boys, because that is a rare beauty right there. But with the good comes the bad, you know, here's a guy who has not played at the National Hockey League level. I can't fault him on this goal. It was deflected by the defenseman. But you can see there are moments in his game where he plays like someone who hasn't had much NHL experience. Look at that rebound he just kicked out there. And that was eerily similar to the one we all saw a couple nights ago in Winnipeg right here. We all remember it. They tied the game with five seconds to go. You're square to the shooter. That doesn't happen. All this is to point out the fact that he's on a one-year deal with Calgary, so they got to figure out, is he worth signing long-term, or is he just not good enough to play at the NHL level? Well, Eric, on the other side of the fence, the Blue Jackets, they say, without a doubt, it's been a disappointing year. One of their big disappointments is R.J. Umberger, but tonight he looks a lot more engaged. Yeah, obviously a terrible night for everyone in the lineup last night, including R.J. Umberger, who makes $5 million a year. But I just wanted to show this one shift, and we don't have the whole thing, but he goes in there, finishes his check here, digs in very hard, finishes his check up there, right there. There we go, we do have it. Then he's rewarded seconds later, makes a great move, a little bit lucky, goes right to Felino, and they're up one nothing. Rewarded after a very bad night in Edmonton last night, digging in harder night and getting rewarded. But he's got pressure on him, R.J. Umberger. We'll see if he can respond in period two with the rest of them. Here's Robin Charlie. Well, before we get to period two, let's take a look at the first period scoring summary brought to you by Future Shop for the season's hottest gadgets at the best price, guaranteed. 
Head to futureshop.ca. Season's greetings from Future Shop. Just the one goal. Nick Foligno's fifth of the year from Umberger and the Keaton. Flames come back to take the uh, shot lead. They struggled early as Columbus, as expected, put a pretty good push on. Second period underway. Back to get it. Johansson is the Blue Jackets. Mentioned losing 7 0 in Edmonton last night. We're down 3 0 after the first, 6 0 after the second. It was academic at that point. Stepniak down low. Calgary winless in their last five at home, so they're trying to. Get back in the win column here at the Dome. Murray and Stepniak, close quarters. Puck squirts free. Camilleri has it along the boards. Nice pass back to the point, but maybe too nice as it split the defenseman. Stepniak couldn't touch it. Would have been offside. Bobrovsky sets it up at the side of the net. Take a look at Murray. November 16th of last year. In a game in Everett towards Laborman, his left shoulder missed the rest of the Western Hockey League season. Having a strong rookie campaign for the Jackets, as that one will create a face-off in the offensive zone. Now, he was taken behind Nail Yakupov a couple years ago at the draft. and You know, a young defenseman, they're hard to find. And it takes a while, doesn't it? It really does, especially when you have a team like Columbus that... that uh, doesn't score a lot of goals offensively so every mistake defensively you make it's crucial and usually it's back in that defensive zone and when you have young defensemen like that you've really got to be patient with them and, and keep working on them. Nice work of the boards down below the goal line. Colborne tied up in there with an Isamov. Two Jones comes over Galliardi and Jack Johnson not far away either. Jones comes up with the puck knocked down. They get it back to the point but an Isamov takes it. His pass, too far for Jenner. Weidman catches up. Chris Butler. Quietly, Chris Butler has had a very good November defensively for the Flames. A lot of block shots. Here's Weidman across the line. Sizing it up. That one just flutters over top of the net. Jack Johnson picks it up. Flames getting a little bit of their own medicine here against Columbus, uh, at least through the first uh, period. A lot of deflected shots, a lot of block shots. Uh, Columbus really doing a good job of getting in the shooting lanes tonight, as opposed to last night. They did not get into enough last night. Hoodler, Flames' leading scorer. They come up with it along the boards. Squirts free, and an off to Blake Como. He'll chip it in. Calgary trading Como for a draft pick last year at the deadline. Came over, and he was part of that amazing run the Jackets were on to finish off the season. Was tipped by O'Brien, but cruising in. Savard goes to the net, loses the puck. An opportunity for Calgary. Just to finish that thought, the Jackets ended up tying Minnesota for eighth in the West, but lost them the tiebreaker. So a, a great surge to make it close, but didn't get in. Now they're in the Eastern Conference, Charlie. It's a little easier in the Eastern Conference. You know, the last 26 games of the year, they went 18-5-3. and three. So That's a pretty good fishing right there. Weidman takes a hit from Jack Skilly. No Brandon Dubinsky tonight for Columbus, so Skilly in the lineup for his second game of the season. One time member of the Chicago Blackhawks. Here's McGrath feathering it ahead. Boma out there. Boma blocked the shot with his glove. He's worried that some damage was done, but he's out there again here in the second period. No worse for wear. Boma trying to get it back out to McGrath. Weidman thinks about coming in. McGrath helps him with the decision. Shot in, and Bobrovsky with the save. Chapu out to center. He'll leave it. Big hit thrown there by McGrath as he comes over on Jared Bull. The two enforcers really didn't come together at all. Nothing comes of the hit. A little bit of a push early in the uh, first period, but a pretty physical game in the first period. 17 to 16, the hits favoring Columbus, and it's continued on the same style here in the second. There's Brody. Russell shoots that one off stage into the corner. DJ Brody, a goal and an assist in Winnipeg. Has the puck. Slides it back to the point. Had someone covering for him. That was Stepniak, but it's knocked away from him. And Joe Hansen trying to go around. Russell, he does, and Barra has to be sharp there. And I'll tell you what, I've been impressed with Ryan Johansson, who's pushing at the side of the net. He's had a very strong game for the Jackets. 
Had a great start two seasons ago offensively. He really struggled last year in the shortened season, but he seems to have found his grip again as far as his hands. There's the play by Umberger to get the puck out. Here comes Johansson, a little bit of a fake, a little bit of a drive. Goes hard at the net. His little elbow up into the face of Brody to finish the play. Brody gets him a little slap in the yap right after that, and that's the key. And when you have as many injuries, uh, especially offensively, that the Columbus Blue Jackets have, you need young players like Johansson making things happen. Gabrick out. Horton hasn't dressed yet since signing that free agent contract. And then, of course, Dubinsky being hurt last night. Nathan Horton skated for the first time in a practice Monday up in Edmonton. is looking at a mid-December return to the lineup. Where I, I don't know if you can return to the lineup if you've never played for the team, but hopefully back in action mid-December for Nathan Horton. Here's Murray. Goes wide on the net. Top of the circle, he'll go down low, and this is Atkinson with it. Hits the referee, comes up front, and it's shot wide. It was Boone Jenner who jumped on it. Had a slap, Schmid. Third amongst NHL defensemen with 65 hits on the season. That one's an icing call. Hockey Life, the ultimate hockey megastore. Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's game is Melita Traditional, or Estate Whole Bean Coffee. Eight shots apiece, nearly five minutes into the second period. Nick Foligno's goal, the only one on the board right now. Schmid trying to get around McKenzie. Puck comes free, and it's Galliardi. Tipped ahead. Colburn caught a piece of it, but this is going to be another icing call. Is sauntering back to get there. Is Tootin. Bob Hartley knew that he had to make sure that he could rekindle that enthusiasm, especially from the shootout. A lot of excitement on the bench. A lot of uh, players uh, getting excited about it. Of course, when you come away with the two points, it even makes it a lot better. And then also, he really realized there was a wounded bear coming in here tonight with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So a lot of the talk this morning in the morning skate was about preparation for this game against the Blue Jackets. Flames and Jackets sharing identical records of 7-11-3 on this season. Flames in a rebuild. The Jackets, though, pushing for a playoff spot, so it's a little surprising, perhaps, to see the Jackets where they are. At this point. Well, the biggest difference for the Blue Jackets, they're only three points of their playoff position in the Metropolitan, or the Metro Division. Yes. Three points behind the Rangers, who are eighth overall in the East. Shot by Como, turned away by Barra. Sean Monaghan trying to dig it free, does, but the puck comes back to Jack Johnson. Looking for some traffic in front, gets it to Mark Letestu. Como to Letestu, back at the point. His shot off a couple of flames. Barra swats it back into the corner. Como goes for the big skate, back to the point, buys his club some time. Sets up, his shot blocked away. Monaghan got in front of it. That one never made it through either. And now Calgary. Up ahead, Monaghan. Across the line, the rookie. Second in NHL scoring amongst first-year players. Is it help from Berchi? Bounces behind Monaghan. Now it's at his feet. Berchi trying to wrap it around. It comes out in front. Weidman. Over, Hoodler's shot, and that one hits Nikitin. He's down. Hoodler battling Shapu in the corner, but Nikitin back up. And that looked like it stung Nikita Nikitin. Hoodler going to come out in front, knock down. Puck squirts free, and Skilly's on it. Here come the Jackets. Three on two, they'll just dump it in. Barra will meet the puck. Is it back to Weidman. Columbus making a line change, and Backlund out to center across the red line. Nice play by Johansson. Takes it away from Michael Backlund. Has Foligno going to the net. Over to Umberger. Umberger tied up by Butler. Camilleri coming in to help out as well. But Umberger gets it to the corner. Foligno on the puck. Butler in. Won't come up with it. Johansson has the puck taken back by Backlund. And this is where it all started between these two. And that one goes off the glass and into the penalty box. The Jackets up by one, and they're throwing their bodies in front of everything here in the second period. Nikita stunk, but okay. 
We would like to salute the Alberta Junior Hockey League, who is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, 50 seasons of Junior A hockey in this province. Some great players, some great teams, some great stories, and certainly they've had a profound impact in this game tonight. You take a look at some of the alumni that are in the organizations. Joe Colborn has the distinction of being the highest ever drafted player directly out of the AJHL, directly out of the AJHL. Back in 2008, Boston took him 16th overall from the Camrose Kodiaks. And I am proud AJHL alum. I cut my teeth three years on ABC TV 10 in Fort McMurray as the voice of the Oil Barons from 92 to 95. So, and our ISO director, Lonnie Corrigal, also spent time in the AJHL. So, Want to wish all the teams and the players in that loop the best of luck this year. It's always fun, and make sure you get out and support the Alberta Junior Hockey League. It's been part of my career in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League, and uh, definitely a great stepping stone for some of these young players, whether they're going to go to Major Junior A College, and as you can see, you can go whatever route you want. Joe Corburn has uh, proven that, along with Galliardi and Glenn, Glenn Cross. You can become top-notch National Hockey League players. The University of Denver came calling for Joe Colburn. And Curtis Glencross has his jersey retired by the Brooks Bandits. Throw that in there. Chris Butler, long pass, tipped in. Lance Boma got a piece of it. After it, Brian McGratton working on better Tootin. Coming over Backlund. Tootin will go the other way. Johnson off the boards. This one's going to bounce out to the neutral zone. Butler couldn't get it by Anisimov, but a penalty coming up as Butler got the stick in on Anisimov. And Columbus will go to the power play for the second time in the hockey game. Chris Butler will probably be arguing this one. He's going to argue he's, he was poking at that loose puck. There it is bouncing right there. He pokes it up as he turns. The stick gets between the legs. Uh, right there in, of Anisimov. Definitely does take him down. But that seems to be the type of play that uh, has been going against the Flames tonight. And the bouncing puck areas is... Blue Jackets really not taking any chance in the defensive zone. They're making sure they get that puck up high off the glass. And it lands, and there's lots of bouncing after that. Flames killing off the first Columbus power play. Wisniewski shot stopped by Barra. Hard pass by Wisniewski looking for Felino. It's by him, so this is going to give Calgary a little bit of a break. His defensive partner, Ryan Murray, walked that puck all the way across the line from that right defensive position, and Wisniewski should have known he wasn't going to be there. Humberger has a face full of T.J. Brody. Backlund over as well, but it comes to Ladislav Schmid hard off the glass, and this one skips by the rookie. Boma, who scored his first NHL shorthanded goal Monday in Winnipeg, hustling up there, couldn't get to the puck in time. To back to the point, Wisniewski, hard over to Murray. Back to Wisniewski. Flips it to Johansson with some room. And TJ Galliardi trying to take that room away. Puck again, back to the point, but nobody home. That's twice on this power play that the Jackets have cleared the zone on their own. Love the uh, Flames in, in the second period, which is a longer change for them than getting the fresh bodies out there. Anisimov, Atkinson shot, misses. Atkinson had a head of steam coming off the bench. Anisimov got him the puck, but the shot was wide. Better Tootin. Puck comes back to the point. It skips away from Atkinson, and Stempniak cruising in the area takes control. Rydman back to Stempniak. Young player off the bench is Boma. He gives chase. Stempniak couldn't catch it. Less than 20 to go in this power play for the Jackets. Boone Jenner to Tootin. Long pass to Anisimov. He shoots Barra with the save. Rebound comes to Stepniak, and he'll swat that down the ice. Very efficient penalty kill here by the Flames as Butler steps back onto the ice. Jackets do clear the zone. And Barra will backhand it to Dennis Weidman. Couldn't control it. Now Butler will go to the far corner. Blake Como, his former teammate, attacks on him. Now Hoodler ahead to Berchi, but he knocked it down and left it behind him. Wyman off the boards. Monahan chips it 
Berchi has it. Holds up. Spent Berchi. Going to work around McKeaton. McKenzie takes a bump from Hoodler. Goes down. Gets up. Kicks the puck ahead. It comes to Wyman. He'll keep it in the zone. Stage and though won't even be able to get to it. And Letestu one handed by Butler and the Black Blue Jackets will make a line change. Nine minutes to go here in the second period. The hardest thing for the Flames uh, so far tonight has been trying to get some kind of uh, sustained action uh, down in the Blue Jackets territory. Some very good defensive coverage. Five NHL games and five nights here on Sportsnet this week. Tomorrow, the Edmonton Oilers host the Florida Panthers, 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time. This telecast is on our Sportsnet Oilers channel. The next night, back here at Saddledome, Florida makes its way down Highway 2 to take on the Flames. Tell us Flames hockey begins at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time on Sportsnet. Flames definitely very unhappy with that icing call. That's the point the referee had to go over and make a little bit of a clarification on the rules to them. Columbus out shooting Calgary 6-1 here in the second period. Their goal came in the first period. Polino to Lumberger and Nikitin. And that one will come out into the neutral zone. As the Flames trying to find an equalizer here in the second period, it's TELUS Flames Hockey. Well, yesterday, the pride of Ottawa, Ontario, Adrian Acoin made it official as he retired from hockey drafted back in 1992 in the fifth round by the Vancouver Canucks. He played for a number of teams, including these two tonight, Charlie, towards the latter stages of his career. But a finer gentleman in the game will be hard to find. Nicknamed affectionately by his teammates, Azoki. He played a 1,108 games. Vancouver, Tampa Bay, New York Island, Chicago, Calgary, Phoenix, Columbus. Played Mudu in Sweden. And believe it or not, is on the 94 Olympic team with Canada. And there used to be a Canadian national team based out of Calgary. He was part of that briefly. Staging after it. Gets the puck away from Umberger. Shot by Stepniak. Stopped by Bobrovsky. His best save of the evening. Oh, he was right place, right time. As Stepniak trying to tie it. That hit the post. And Cavalieri was stopped by Bobrovsky. Broken stick behind the play. Flames attack. Staging with it. Looking to get it back to Cavalieri. Staging. As it's picked up by Felino, he'll flip it through the air. Calgary's new number one line certainly coming through with a couple of great chances right there. Very good scoring opportunities, and I haven't seen Lee Stepniak have so many good scoring opportunities the last three or four games and not get in in the end. One might say he's due. Overdue, especially in a 1-0 game. Jackets would love to add to their lead. They dump it back in, Boone Jenner. Plays it around the boards. Russell, second opportunity. Gets it by Atkinson, but it hits something on a stanchion on the glass, and it bounced right at the back of the net. Jack Johnson went all the way through. Stopped by Jenner. His shot goes right to Atkinson. Better Tootin. Misses. Johnson. As Misimov will pick it up. Brody is there, so the Flames with some good chances, and now Columbus coming back with some good offensive zone time. Brody off the boards, and the Flames will chip this ahead. Boma after it, but Letestu is there before him. It's a situation where you spend so long defensively in your own zone, you get the puck out, you don't have any gas left, uh, and try to get that offensive going as Boma was chasing it up the ice. Berchi. Get it by Nikitin. It's played back in. Reto Barrett, 26 year old Swiss netminder, out to play it. Como into the slot, and that one might have hit the iron. Is Letestu let it go? Letestu with four points against Calgary in his last four games against the Flames. Tried to add to that mark right there. Here's Como along the boards. Letestu. McKenzie comes in, a cycle going for Columbus. Intercept is Monahan. He can't. Como being watched over by 23 in red. Now it's knocked out of the air by Berchi. Chips it, trying to get around to Keaton. Didn't work before. This time it doesn't work either. It's a big body in Nikita Nikitin. Puck comes back to the point. Butler shot up high. Dombrowski didn't see it. Didn't need to though. Savard going to push the puck free. 
And McKenzie will get it. He'll dump it out. Now this Blue Jackets line needs to make a change. They've been hemmed out there for a while. Amazing how it goes from uh, line to line once they get caught in their own zone. It's the way the National Hockey League, the teams really fold back and try to defend. It almost looks like a power play opportunity for the team that's on the offense. Calgary glove it ahead, so the whistle goes, and a face-off coming back in the Calgary. And Flames down by a goal here in the second period. It's Tellus Flames Hockey. Canadian Pacific Goals for Kids is proudly sponsored by Canadian Pacific and its 2,700 railroaders based in Calgary. For every Flames goal this season, the railway will donate $250 to Kids Sport and the Flames Even Strength Program. Goals by Flames help CP build stronger kids and stronger communities. Blue Jackets have had a lot of success in Calgary of late. They won their last three visits here. A couple of them have gone into shootouts. They're up 1-0. Late in the second period. Out shooting Calgary 12-11 now. Camilleri tried to cut the puck off but couldn't. Stajan slips. Bouncing puck. Umberger across the line. Another fine pass to Felino. This time Barrow waiting for it. Is Russell and Umberger are going to go? Are they? The glove, the A glove came off. A head got twisted but apparently they're not going to go. Russell getting a little bit more aggressive. Not sure what Umberger did right at the end of the play, but Chris Russell did not back off, and maybe it was something to do when they had their playing time in Columbus. This perfectly preserved uniform came to us via a generous donation from our champion's wife. Pick your winners today with pools. Another bouncing puck that the Flames can't get a hold of. Umberger is able to get control of down goes Stepniak. It was shot by Felino. There's a little bit of a pushing and shoving. Russell just goes right back at him. Russell had the, the stick in the stomach of Umberger, making sure he doesn't get to the front of the net. Safe to say you'd be hard-pressed to make a case in the last month that there's been a better defenseman for the Calgary Flames than Chris Russell. Now they're all just really look at his ice time going up, his responsibility. And coming back here with the Calgary Flames was a draft pick of Columbus. is the third overall in 05 out of Medicine Hat. Tootin comes across the line, but it's offside. The officials were screaming. Tootin knows better, I would suggest. <laughs> Or the line's been kind of giving him the hairy eyeball there after that call. Big, aggressive, sized defenseman. Knows how to play that defensive style. Uses his weight to his advantage. Skates very well for a big man. And he's teamed up with Jack Johnson. First rounder of Carolina a few years ago. Put some bulk on that blue line. Tough to get around him. As that one is swatted by Tootin over the glass and into the penalty box. If that was a spike in volleyball, it went wide. Not a lot of hang time up there either. <laughs> it was up in the air and over at that point. Not a lot of space on the ice tonight for the Flames. Uh, they cannot really get their forechecking going. They've had a couple very good shifts here in the second period as far as the offense and the forecheck. But other than that, Columbus has really narrowed this ice. Being in ill humor this morning, the head coach of the Jackets, and blunt about it. He says, we have to be a board battle team, and that's certainly what they've turned this game into. Here's Shane O'Brien. Flames trying to stretch this ice out right now, but uh, the Blue Jackets with that one goal lead really putting a lot of players right across the center ice to take away the speed or the passes. Second of two meetings this season between Columbus and Calgary because Columbus has moved to the Eastern Conference. Calgary won the first one 4-3 at Nationwide Arena back on October 4th. Jerry Paul with the puck. Feeds the defenseman to Keaton. Trying to get it to the net. That one goes off the body. Chapu with it. Savard, no lane. Battle of the fourth lines right now, and Bratton gets it out. Chapu has it in his feet. Gets it back, one-time draft pick to the Philadelphia Flyers. Plays it in, but he takes a hit from Lance Boma for his trouble. And McGratton at the line. Long shot, Bobrovsky steers that away. Staging quickly on the rebound, and right there was Bobrovsky. Schmid 
off the boards. This one rolls in behind the net, trying to step it out in front. Is Lance Boma. Interesting when Boma was talking to Roger in between the periods, and he talked about being sat down and talking to the coaches and having a really good conversation. Whatever they said has certainly inspired number 17 since he's come back in the lineup. It's a matter of, of learning your lesson or, or finding out what the coaches expect of you. And then when you get that opportunity on the ice, you've got to perform and show them that you can do what they want you to do. Calgary on the attack. Have not seen a lot of Colburn, Galliardi, and Jones lately. Stepniak shot block coming across was Murray. Terrific block by the youngster. And I think Stepniak thought he had a lot more time than that. Now Murray's going to lead the rush. Flicks it to the corner. Gets it. Takes a look over his shoulder. Passes it out in front, but O'Brien is there for Calgary. Pass by Camilleri. No icing. Bobrovsky will leave it at the side of the net. And Wisniewski picks it up. Must have heard you on the bench. We have an icing call. The Colborn line is <laughs> out right now. Talk about the youngster, Murray. Mentioned injured last year. Right here does a great trade, uh, play right. Murray comes all the way across. It's a good block on that shot as Lee Stepniak waiting for it to develop a little bit and allowing uh, Stajan to get towards the front of the net. But uh, Murray coming out of nowhere with a double leg slide. Not quite, not quite as nice as Barra's save in the first period, but pretty good. This one's hooked up in the air. Berchi didn't see it in the lights. Bounced right in front of him, but it comes to Umberger. And he'll pump it into the Calgary end. Shots are 13 apiece here in the second, but 1-0 in favor of the Jackets. 90 seconds to go in period number two. Polino trying to protect it. Does. Gets it to Johansson. On the hand in the corner. It comes to Umberger. Johansson at the point. Johansson side of the net. And Barra will just smother it. As he has a few visitors in the crease. Line has been very productive, at least uh, as far as offensive possession. Time, Felino, Johansson, and Umberger who have the one goal on the evening, but they've been able to make a lot happen because they're keeping the puck in front of them. They're, they're keeping their feet moving, and they're always uh, chasing down those loose pucks. Draws one by the Jackets. Como to the net. Barra knocks that one away, but the first man to it is Latestu off the side of the net. Everybody's got video these days. There's one minute remaining in the second period. Not a conventional play, but it worked. The stage and came right out in front of his own net. He gets it back after the dump in. Now Como with it. Out to center. Stepping back, back to Camilleri. To Stepniak, to Camilleri, goes to the net. Oh, and he just hit this outside. Going to pick a spot on goalie Bob. Stepniak gets it back. Weidman to Butler with room. Shoots, and Bobrovsky knocks that behind the net, waiting for it. Camilleri tied up with Better Tootin. Squeeze is free, and the Jackets come away. This is Blake Como off the glass and Columbus will make a wholesale change less than 20 seconds to go in the second period Columbus nursing a one nothing lead flames just having a hard time physically getting towards the front of the net against the, the Blue Jackets here tonight Colborn in the corner takes a bump comes out in front Boom Jenner in the right place he gets it and through 40 minutes of play it's Nick Foligno with the only goal Calgary pushing Jeff Merrick but the Blue Jackets looking for a little redemption after last night. We return to Calgary where it remains tight. Only one goal scored so far after two periods of play. It belongs to the Columbus Blue Jackets and they enjoy a 1-0 advantage. I'd like to remind you, Friday Night Hockey features an OHL matchup in 48 hours. The Windsor Spitfires will travel to Guelph to take on the storm for a 5 p.m. mountain start on Sportsnet 1 East and Ontario. We welcome back. Eric Francis right now, who will wax poetic on the future of two veteran players of the Calgary Flames. First up, Michael Camilleri, who has nine goals this season and has played very well in the minimal time he's played after an injury. Where does he fit right now as far as the Flames look ahead? Well, I think, you know, here we are at the quarter pool of the season. And it's time to start taking stock of some of the positives and the negatives. But one of the big positives is that Camilleri's had a great start to the season, almost a point a game 
leading the team, as you said, with nine goals. This is important for the, the team as they move forward because he will be moved this year. There is absolutely no question Mike Camilleri will be traded this year. He's in the final year of his contract. He's an Eastern guy. He wants to move East eventually, and it's a perfect fit. You start shopping him now, you can start getting a bit little higher value. You've got more teams that still feel like they're in it. You've also got the opportunity to make sure he doesn't get injured. If he gets injured, then you can't trade him. There are a lot of different things in, in the works right now. I guarantee they're looking hard at where he might go and be a good fit. Conversely, how about his line mate tonight, number 22, Lee Stepniak? Lee Stepniak is the guy that said admittedly he likes playing here. He's a pro's pro. Where do you see his place? You know, I really think that they want to look at keeping him long term. I don't think that Lee Stepniak is going to be around in three or four years from now when this team starts challenging for a playoff spot. But I think he's a great bridge player. I think he's very well liked in the room, very well respected. He's the kind of guy that can teach youngsters how to be a pro, how to be an NHLer, and move this team from where they are now to being closer to a, a playoff contender at some point in time. I think he should be signed longer term. Eric Francis on the future of two veteran players <laughs> on this Wednesday evening. Almost set for the start of the third. Back to Robin Chart. We take a look at our scoring summaries brought to you by Panago Pizza before, during, or after the game. We get a fresh Panago. Just the one goal. Nick Foligno was fifth of the year in the first period. No scoring in the second period. Look at the hits. 32 for Columbus, 24 for the Calgary Flames. Flames with a slight advantage in uh, face-offs, but uh, there's just not a lot of room out there right now. Columbus really doing a good job taking away that neutral ice zone and not giving uh, the Flames a chance to skate. Just the fourth time this season that the Jackets have taken a lead into the third period. They're 3-0, and when having done so already. You know what the real bad stat is, though? Uh, Under uh, Todd Richards, they're 30 old and old when leading going into the third. There's a chance. Camilleri just misses. Now Russell. Now along the boards. It's going to go to the far side after Polino. He'll chip it out. Yep, since Todd Richards took over, when this team gets a lead going into the third, they've been money. He bounces off stage and Flames have to be a little bit careful. Could have been too many men. Murray with it. Jackets. Get in below the goal line. Cut free by Russell, but comes right back to Johnson at the point. Jones, his sixth hit of the game. He leads the Flames in that category. And Calgary's away. Colburn crisscrossing with Galliardi. Bill Colburn goes wide. Shot goes off the stick. Out of play. A little pushing and shoving. Some extracurricular now as everybody's paired off. A little late hit on Colburn. Took offense to that. From Johnson, get right back in this kitchen, right in the face. That's why he's been trying to skate off. A little bit of a tumble right here as he's going in to the boards. Has a, a big time collision. And had his feet taken out by, by Jenner as they tangled up. I don't mean taken out, but yeah. you can see right there that left foot of Jenner comes in and catches the ankle of Weidman and down he went awkwardly into the boards and that's the hardest hits to take right that you just don't have time to protect yourself off the face off Berchi battling Johnson for the puck McKenzie will come over flips it across the red line by Letestu and back to get it Butler Calgary giving up a goal, 921 into the first period. Since then, nothing for either team. Nice move, shot, Monaghan goes wide. Berchi stuck by Bobrovsky. Oh, Sven Berchi jumped on that puck off the end boards, but Bobrovsky was up to the test. Pretty good moves uh, so far for the Flames in the third period here. The one was Camilleri early, missed the net. Right there is a good move through the middle, missed shot. But for Sven Berchi, just a split second too late getting to that puck off the backboards allowed Grabowski enough time to get over and at least cover the bottom half of that net. Schmid moves it. Shane O'Brien's shot goes wide. It's off the glass. Atkinson didn't see it. That allows the Flames to put it back in the jacket's end. Bobrovsky, a couple of head fakes. Intercepted behind the net. Hoodler trying to get it out in front. Johnson blocks that. Poke to the corner. Schmid with it. In the corner, Hoodler. Back to the point. Hits O'Brien. Skate. Now a chance. 
Jenner has Atkinson trying to get him the pass, and it's just too wide as Shane O'Brien was somewhat caught in no man's land there, but no damage. He's able to force that uh, pass uh, to make a perfect pass, and that allowed the goaltender also to anticipate. Backlund shot is dropped by Bobrovsky, creating a chance for Calgary. They're after it. The Keaton checked by Backlund to the point. Brody shoots. Oh, and it's right into the body on Bobrovsky, and he gets a little poke for his trouble from Brian McGratton as Lance Boma and Jack Skilly had something going on to the other side of the goalie. Brian couldn't keep his play in front of him, so he does the smart thing. There's that bouncing puck we've seen quite a bit of tonight. There he comes down the middle, forces the pass, and watch as, as Bear comes across. He's able to use his stick to poke check. And there's Brian McGratton, a little extra slap at the goaltender, and really not much slap back at Brian McGratton. I think his reputation has kind of preceded him at that point. Chris Butler. That one bounces off the body. It was Jared Bowley went down to block it. That's in, and Bobrovsky again. Butterfly down. Glove has the puck and a faceoff coming up. Intact Insurance is proud to sponsor the Calgary Flames and all the fans who carry a torch for them. Intact Insurance, you're back. Not the greatest start to the season. 6-9-2. and two. Pretty respectable saves, uh, save percentage at uh, just almost 91%. He has not played like he did last year. First Russian ever to win the Vesna Trophy. You know he'll be in consideration for the Olympics. Stemniak trying to get it down to Wisniewski. Cut it off from Camilleri and Murray has it. Long pass Dumberger too far from him. Russell reversing it onto the stick of Brody. He has to come back to get it though. Shots are 18-13 in favor of Calgary here early in the third period. Camilleri trying to go cross ice for Brody. That's intercepted. Flames need to get playing a north-south game, Charlie, or is that too simplistic? No, it's pretty much what they've been starting to do here in the third period. Had a lot more chances already here. Colburn in. Shoots. Goal! Well, that's about as north-south as you can go. His parents, mom and dad watching. Colborne getting his breakaway goal. Nice feed. Again, north-south. Two quick passes right here. Right up the gut. A little bit of luck as it bounces through. Here comes Joe Colborne. Protects the puck very well. There's that lanky size at 6'5 right here. Protects the puck in the backhand and then drags it back. Across the body, as Grabowski cannot get that glove up quick enough. My dad always said, most dangerous shot in hockey, the backhander. And Joe Colburn uses it for his second of the year, and he ties his game at one. Derchi battling for it in the neutral zone, but it's the Jackets with the puck. Shane O'Brien absorbs the hit, finds the outlet. That's speed. It's by Berchi and out to the red line. Jack Johnson with it. Berchi. Knocking it out of midair, has it across the line, so then Berchi shoots, and Bobrovsky's not going to take any chances. As he hangs on to the handle there. Carolyn Samard of Red Deer entered score and win in his 1A Garmin Newbie 2597 LMT GPS, courtesy of Safeway and Melita Traditional or Estate Whole Bean Coffee, thanks to Joel Colburn's second goal of the season. He did, however, score in Winnipeg in the shootout. That just doesn't count in that category, so that's probably got to help the confidence, too. You see the way that the centermen, of, the young centermen fighting for that ice time. The centermen flip-flopping Backlund and Joel Colburn, which will give him more ice time. You take advantage of it. Colburn from Jones and Russell. Puck rolls back to Bobrovsky, and you really have to like the way the Calgary Flames have come out here in the third period. Seven shots on net already. No shots for Columbus. And they've had some opportunities. They seem to be skating a lot more. Getting, finding that open space as you drive hard to the net. Look for that loose puck. As Lance Bulma wants to continue his success offensively. 
with that assist, Chris Russell now tying down as Dennis Wyman for scoring lead amongst Flames defense. Both for 12 points on the year. DJ Galliardi shot blocked away by Bobrovsky. Paddle down and that one went behind the net. Chipped out. Nice play by Atkinson to knock it out of midair. Working on Butler and it's blocked by Chris Butler. What else is new? Boone Jenner. And the workout in front being watched by Galliardi. Played to Colborne, the goal scorer. Can't get by Wisniewski. This one will bounce off a jacket into the neutral zone. Calgary out shooting the jackets. 7 0 here in the third period and have tied the game. Mike Camilleri can't control the pass. He's picked up Murray with it. You're seeing a lot more space for that neutral ice zone so far here in, in the uh, third period as far as stretching that out, getting an opportunity to, to get passes. So who creates that in this case, Charlie? Is that something that the Jackets aren't doing, or is that something that the Flames have forced upon the Jackets? Well, a little bit of combination. When you're up by one on the road, you, you're, as a Jack, a Blue Jack, you're going to try and protect it a little bit more, a little more cautious, but I think the, the Flames, the forwards, are a lot more active through the neutral ice zone. Instead of standing in one position, uh, they're skating into open positions, and that allows the defenseman a better target. So both coaches looking on. There's the Flames. Being a win consecutive games, just the second time this season if they do, while well, the Jackets trying to bounce back after that 7 0 drubbing they took in Edmonton. It's just the second time since Bobrovsky has signed with the Jackets that they've given up six or more goals. But both of them coming in games played in Edmonton against the Oilers. This is a replica of the remote that inspired the big win. The original was tragically lost in a couch. Pick your winners today with pools. Work in progress. As you can say about the Calgary bench and their coaching staff always trying to get better. And what uh, well, Hartley doesn't like that call. He wants it all the way into the defensive zone as that puck was shot into the bench of the Flames. Flames win the draw. Pretty good in that department tonight. 52% after two periods. Brody hits the red line and he'll hammer it in. Jack, it's a pretty good faceoff team. Sixth best faceoff percentage coming into this game. Russell take it the shot deep. He'll come back and pick it up. In front of the penalty box, dump it in. Jackets make a change. Flames will change a couple of players. And Bobrovsky's going to handle it himself, but he can't get it by Berchi. Well, Sven Berchi has been around the puck both offensively and defensively in this game. You wonder if there's something more for him still to come. Well, the energy has been there, and we saw the energy the last couple of games. Well, it's just a matter of now feeling comfortable and confident with your offensive team. Berchi gets it to Monaghan. This one's going to roll right to Bobrovsky, and again... Discretion, the better part of Valor. 1-1 one, one here in the third period as the Blue Jackets and Flames deadlock. There was action in the Western Hockey League tonight. This final saw the Prince Albert Raiders, red hot in the east, knock off another red hot team. The Swift Current Broncos won nothing. And speaking of the Broncos, how about Flame prospect Cloda Gordon is off to a great, great start this year. 32 points so far this year, 47 goals in his last two seasons. He was a six-round pick. And the Flames saw something in him a couple of years ago, and it's coming to fruition, getting better with age. A lot of positives with the future of the Flames, the youngsters. How about Abbotsford? 4-2 in Rockford tonight. The Heat top record in the entire American Hockey League. They're on a seven-game road trip. They've now gone 4-1. and one. They're playing really well. Joey McDonald picking up the victory tonight in goal. Humberger. Checked by Russell, puck comes back right out in front. And here's Mike Camilleri. Shot goes wide. This one will roll out to center and Umberger on it. Well, he's had an inspired game tonight for the Jackets. So is Johansson too. He's really done a good job once he's got that puck in the offensive zone. Long breakout pass from Calgary, but it misses everybody. Charlie, I don't know if folks know this, but Chris Russell is a twin. His other brother, Ryan Russell, now playing over in Sweden. 
they missed each other in Columbus. Chris Russell got traded to St. Louis two months later. Ryan Russell was acquired by the Blue Jackets. They played different places in the, Amer in the Western Hockey League. Never quite played together in the National Hockey League. Just missed by two months being part of the Blue Jackets at the same time. Ryan Russell a couple of years ago played a few games with Columbus. Got called up, scored two goals. So then spent the last two years in Springfield, the American League affiliate of Columbus. This one brought in offside. And one of the guys that decided to go play in Europe, he's, his brother's over in Sweden. And a lot of times you, that game will fit your style a little bit more. Obviously when you had had a little taste of the NHL, which Chris's brother Ryan had, and, and the next year you don't get called up at all through the shortened season last year, your options at that point uh, are pretty well open as far as where you think you might have a chance to go and Ryan skates anywhere near as smooth as his brother that's a perfect place to be playing it's been fascinating though always interesting you got the twins in, in Vancouver what if the Russell team, they've been able to pull cranks on their coaches you know change positions change jerseys those types of things not buying that are you not no no okay I thought I'd try Butler Backhanding it, it rolls all the way back down to Bobrovsky. Folino for the Blue Jackets in the first period, his fifth of the year. Colborne, his second here in the third for Calgary. That's where we sit, 1-1. Flames back in action on Friday. They'll host the Florida Panthers. We'll have that for you. Chapeau knocking down Berchi. Florida winning in a shootout in Vancouver last night. John Tortorelli not happy. Uh, you'll have to be more specific than that. He was just not on, not happy. And that's uh, that's what can happen. Uh, it's the National Hockey League, a lot of teams, a lot of pride out there. Como with a chance. As that one goes off O'Brien's of stick into the mesh. Shop and swipe your club card at Safeway today. You could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecasts, and you could win a week of unlimited luxury at Dreams Resorts and Spa, courtesy of RedTag.ca. Ray Como with a fairly good scoring opportunity from the right face-off circle. Right here, the Flames have to be a little bit stronger and pick up the open man. And that was Blake Como. And Shane O'Brien came back. Good job getting some active stick in front of that shot. That stage and chasing Jack Johnson. This one's flipped through the air. Knocked down by the Flames. Johansson able to bring it across the line legally. Russell feels the pressure from Johansson, knocked down, but gets it to Mike Camilleri. He'll turn and slap it off the boards. Too far for staging. Camilleri reboots this. Off Stempniak and in. Johnson sees him turn. Stempniak trying to outmuscle Jack Johnson. Staging comes in wrong side as Polino pops up with the puck. Blue Jackets with numbers. In the Calgary end, Johansson. That one's blocked. Butler got in front of that. That's a phrase I'm getting awfully used to saying this year. Chris Butler blocking another shot. And a great example of a, a player getting an opportunity, giving more ice time, more responsibility, and taking advantage of it. Taking full advantage of it. Is... They come in different ways, don't they? You block shots differently. Getting right into the uh, shooting lanes is so important. And here we have number one and number two as far as block shots on the Calgary Flames. 57 for Chris Butler and 55 for Chris Russell. As mentioned, you do it in, in different ways. Russell's able to skate and get into those lanes. And I think it's more positional play by Chris Butler. Anisimov trying to tip it by O'Brien. Schmid in there as well. Puck scores free. And Michael Backlund has it. With Lance Bowman, Brian McGrath. Off the boards, it hit. The turnbuckle and came back out. Plays offside. We're tied here at the Dome. Columbus and Calgary. It's Tellus Flames hockey. Now, no two hockey players are the same. That we know. Here's a look at, at Cam Atkinson. But what an interesting comparison he is to Flames prospect Johnny Goudreau. Both went to Boston College. In Goudreau's case, he's at Boston College. Both won an NCAA championship there, won, or were Hobie Baker finalists. You take a look at the point totals, their late round picks. 
Cam Atkinson's 5'7", John Goudreau listed at 5'8", so smaller forwards. Now again, no two players are the same, but I think if you're a Flames fan, do you look at a Cam Atkinson and go, well, you know, that might be an example of what John Goudreau could be? It, it really proves that uh, you, you have uh, some smaller players that uh, can be very successful here in the National Hockey League, and Goudreau with those offensive numbers. Very impressive. And he continues to act, we should point out. Now Atkinson went to Boston College for three years. Goudreau's just starting his third, and already the numbers are very similar. So, again, no two players are ever the same. But very eerie in the comparison of the fact that Hobie Baker nominees won championships, late round picks in the NHL. He's nearly caught with too many men, and Ladislav Schmid. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. The Calgary Flames are going to be penalized for too many men. And the Jackets will get their third power play of the game. Unfortunately, this pass goes D to D. And the D is trying to ch change right there. Extra player, Weidman just getting ready to step off the ice. And as he steps off the ice, Puck actually goes into the bench. So Bob Hartley's happy about that. Schmied, Not really. No. Schmied hitting Wyden didn't help the situation, I suppose. Well, they were there was a line change going on, so what they're trying to do is buy time for the forwards to get on. Uh, Schmied did not realize that Wyden was trying to get off also. And you're, usually they're the last two players to, ch to change or the defenseman, but Wyden was already at the door when that pass came across. Jack is over to on the power play in this game. Johansson with it, shoots! That one didn't make it through again. The Flames getting right in on top of Reto Barrett. It's Ladislav Schmid who took the brunt of that Johansson shot. Well, and they end up recovering the rebound too, and that's just, you know it's gonna hurt because the defenseman had such a, a good space to walk up to wind up to take that shot. But comes back to the point. Tootin plays it to Johansson. Umberger at side of the net. Barra helping out his own cause. Got in the way of Umberger, but Jackets keep it alive. Hard pass to Johansson. Puck comes right to TJ Galliardi, and he'll pitchfork it down the ice. Good defensive coverage of that last part of the power play by the Flames holding that box, forcing Columbus to try and make passes through the seams. Better to Pass goes behind Atkinson around the boards. Boone Jenner is their second unit out for Columbus and that one shot into the Flames bench and the faceoff will stay in the Calgary end. Ladislaw Schmid. Yep, I'm okay. Get me back out there. Oh, it's amazing. Right here. There's that hard shot as uh, the players get involved. Both Lance Bulma. He's thinking right now at this point. Oh, missed me but there's Schmid following up to make that big block shot. 52 seconds to go in Columbus's power play. It's been a very quiet night for the penalty box attendants. This is just the third penalty that we've seen. All three have gone to Calgary. One side has been sleeping. He hasn't had any activity at all. And Isamov trying to drag the puck to the front of the net. This one comes back to the point. Ryan Murray with it. To an Isamov. Watched. He comes back to Murray. Over. Wisniewski couldn't get the shot. Ken Murray looks for a lane. Wisniewski as well. Now Murray gets a lane. He hits his own man, Atkinson. This one's knocked to the corner. Ten seconds to go in the penalty as Stempniak gets to it. He'll dump it down the ice. Calgary's not been very good overall in the penalty kill. 28th in the league, but they are 10th best at home. Very aggressive. And I think at home, too, you feel more pressure to be blocking more shots as the penalty kill now has been complete. Three for three tonight for the Flames in that category. Seven minutes to go in the third period. 1-1, Calgary and Columbus. Brody off the boards. Hoodler will tip it in. Berchi, going to split the defenseman, gets in on Savard. Puck comes free, and it's grabbed by the test tube. There's three power play shots for Columbus in their three opportunities, so Calgary doing a good job in that regard. To the point, Savard blocked off. Monahan in front of that finds Camilleri. Delays. Now he has some support into Hoodler. 
Savard dumped down in front of Hoodler, no room, and Camilleri comes busting right through the middle. He kicks it, still has it, shoots, Bobrovsky makes the save, didn't see it. And it's cleared as cruising in the area was the Flames' leading scorer, Yuri Hoodler. Getting that puck at the net, forcing Bobrovsky, who has not been calm with the puck tonight, really has been fighting those shots. Uh, but the biggest issue for the Flames is trying to get players in deep enough because of the size of the defenseman here in Columbus. Camilleri across the line, off balance. Felino with the puck. His fifth of the year was the first goal of the game and the only goal for Columbus so far. Bounces away from staging. Tomberger deflects it in, the fans into it now as you can hear them urging the home team on. DJ Galliardi charges down the right side. Can't get the shot through. That's blocked. Nice defensive play by Tootin. Picked up now by Felino. Felino trying to go around the defenseman. Runs in to Reto Berra. And immediately he's pinned to the ice. The official's right on top of it. Berra looks like he's okay. Everybody else, well. Felino gets a little shot for his troubles. Calgary and Columbus tied at one as both teams go into the net looking for that go-ahead goal. The Toronto Maple Leafs are defying the conventions of hockey analytics. No, it's not a fluke, but the game they're playing has no margin for error. Subscribe today at www.sportsnet.ca slash magazine. And another week of NFL action kicks off on Sportsnet tomorrow. The high-flying New Orleans Saints visit the Atlanta Falcons, who shockingly have only two wins in their first ten. It all kicks off 6 p.m. Mountain on Sportsnet West, Pacific East, and Ontario. 1-1 here at the Dome. Just over five minutes to go. Puck comes to the side of the net. Jackets still have it. Cruising out and shooting is Jenner. He hits Anisimov with the puck. Comes back out in the circle. Picked up. Here's Galliardi. He'll tap it in by Wisniewski, turning his Murray to get it. He's hit by the goal scorer for Calgary, Colborne. Jones comes over. A giveaway. Colborne couldn't handle it. Puck comes back out in the neutral zone. Butler, 26-year-old from St. Louis, originally drafted by Buffalo. Chris Butler. We talked about blocking a lot of shots these days for Calgary. Here's Butler across the line. Weidman trying to get it back out in front. Does at the side of the net. Boma. Bobrovsky couldn't find it twice. He tried to put his big paw on it. But it's all right as Felino has it for Columbus. Things much more casual through the neutral ice zone, not trying to force passes that aren't there. And what they're doing, get it up offside here. Take a look at the play here that Lance Bowman was involved in. But it, it develops to the neutral ice zone. They take their time getting through, and then no shot here. So get it at the net. You've got players standing out in front. Uh, Bowman got one good shot at it and had a hard time getting back out as far as that rebound but that's the key when you're tight games like that you don't know when or how that puck can get in russell with it calgary out shooting columbus 24 14 the jackets with just one shot here in the third period they had all of 14 yesterday in the seven nothing loss to edmonton this is a team that averages 29.3 shots a game so Something's not clicking right now. No Brandon Dubinsky in this game. And without Matt Calvert and Marion Gabbert for the last little while as well. Long shot. That one handled by Barra, and he's forced to freeze it. Well, let's send it to George Popolis and Barry Davis for an update on what's coming up on Connected. We'll have full post-game reaction from Calgary tonight. Yes, and it's Sid versus Ovi. Round one, we'll have that as well for you coming up on Connected. Thanks, fellas, and my guess is you're also going to see a, a lot of looks at that Reto Berra save on the power play that the Jackets had in the first period. What an amazing play that was. 1-1. Is there an amazing play left in this game for either team? Boone Jenner hopes so. He has the puck across the line. Shot blocked. Eliardi. Maybe he's got a play. Back to get it. Savard. He'll leave it. Lotestu has it. Calgary making a few changes on the back end. Here comes Blake Como. Hits the red line. He'll send it in so the Jackets can make some changes. 
This becomes a real chess match, Charlie, doesn't it, for these two teams? It really does. You're trying to obviously try to keep control of the puck and get that puck offensively. On the other hand, the little tiny battles become more important as you get close to under three minutes. Russell's shot from the point doesn't make it through. Monaghan looking for it. It's gobbled up, and here comes Atkinson and Umberger. Jay Umberger after it. Brody swipes it away from him, and Isamov can't get the shot by Monaghan. Monaghan can't get the stick free. Now he doesn't. Boy, collapsing at the point was Ryan Murray. I think he's okay. Boston Edge bounces right back up. Stajan across the line. Five white jerseys to greet him. Not a lot of room for Matt Stajan. Stepniak finds Camilleri. Not a lot of room again as the Jackets just collapse right to the middle. Take the space away. Go to center. Johansson has it. Hooks it back onto the stick of Jack Johnson. Wearing an A for the Jackets. Columbus, the only team in the National Hockey League without a captain. Of course, the Flames captain, Mark Giordano, on the sidelines right now. Can't get it out. Kept in shot. Barra had to make a save, but we had to be sharp right there. Stepniak intercepting it, not out. Now the Flames will get it out. Stepniak's knocked down in front of the Flames bench, slow to get up, and he'll head off. 98 seconds to go here in the third period. Tootin up the middle, knocked down. Jones, good stick, picked up. Galliardi with it. DJ Galliardi, that shot's bounced off the leg of Tootin. He bounces up to hit Jones. Atkinson with it, smothered by Colborn. Galliardi to Russell. Now room, Brody takes the shot, goes to the corner, still has it. T.J. Brody, tied up by Mark Letestu. Brody looks like he's content to get a face-off as Colburn's broken his stick. He heads off for a new twig. Jones comes in, tries to use his considerable size and weight. Minute to go here in the third period, tied at one. Boone Jenner dumping it in, Barra. Out to get it. Flames have already made a line change and Columbus answers back. The Flames to avoid going to overtime if they can, but so would the Jackets like to avoid it. Como shot goes off a stick off the glass and rolls right back to Murray. Murray, a quick pass, nobody home. But Columbus get to the puck first. Russell behind the net. Como pops up with it. Blake Como, watched by Weidman to Felino. Nick Felino tied up by Russell. They battle. Felino finds Como. He's going to give it right back to Felino. 13 seconds to go. Felino gains some space, shoots. That one's blocked off by Calgary, and Monaghan will clear it out. Flames one last chance, knocked down at center. We're headed to overtime for the second straight game for Calgary. Not a lot of room out there all night. Both teams playing in very close to the chest, but the Flames a very solid third period as far as shots on net, scoring opportunities. They did get the one goal. Joe Colburn, his second of the season, has brought in this game into overtime. Time now for our game review, brought to you by Intact Insurance, your home, your auto, your business. Ask your broker about Intact Insurance Company. No surprise here, the Flames give up that first goal. Again, Nick, Nick Foligno was first in the first period. But Joe Colburn, as we mentioned, in the third period gets his third of the year. 72 total hits. I'm glad I'm sitting up here tonight. That's a, a bruising game going on down there, and they still have more time to go. Ice packs will be at a premium. You take a look at the man who opened the scoring, 921 into the first period, Nick Foligno. And then the man who tied it in the third at 328, Joe Colburn. His second of the year, his first here in Calgary, his hometown, with his parents. That's got to be a big deal. Very exciting uh, hometown boy coming back and playing here in Calgary. He's excited about being here. And again, you're seeing his uh, reaction as far as the extra time he's getting out there. Telex Flames Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Telex. The future is friendly. Well, these two teams fairly evenly matched when playing beyond 60 minutes this season. Flames have a one game advantage as far as the number of games they've went into overtime and shootout. And they're fresh off a very exciting one in Winnipeg. 
The Jackets have been to overtime recently. Prior to their games in Ottawa and Edmonton, they played three straight. They lost twice in overtime to Washington, Boston, then lost at home in a shootout to Montreal. Their only win came in a shootout against the New York Islanders the day after Calgary visited Nationwide Arena, so way earlier in the season. As we mentioned, Calgary, 5-4 shootout win in Winnipeg on Monday. And prior to that, their only other success, a 3-2 win in Chicago. That's Obera's first game. But Obera is still looking for his first win at home, and he's now going to have to continue his search for his first win in regulation. It's no determination yet on who's going to win this. Atkinson like to play a role. He dumps it down low. Keaton jumping up into the rush. Expect both sets of defensemen to be activated here. Trying to come up with it. Atkinson back at the point. Skips over his stick. Stage it on top of him. Won't come up with it. Better to a regular old defenseman. Plays it ahead. And Jack Johnson, another D-man, jumping into the rush. Takes a hit from Russell. Johansson. There's a couple of red jerseys around him. Still with the puck. Over to Umberger. He's fresh out on the ice. Calgary unable to make changes so far. Russell coming to get it. He's going to spin it back to Brody. It's over his stick. Umberger will get to it. Tied up, Matt Stajan. The Flames beginning to look a little tired here to start overtime as they've been trapped out there for a full minute. Great play here by Matt Stajan. Go back, regroup, keep possession of the puck, and allow his teammates to change, get some fresh bodies out there. Here comes Mike Camilleri. Zooming into Columbus territory. Still with it, shoots, and he just missed wide. It comes back to Chris Butler. Side of the net. Oh, Camilleri! Just tipped it wide. Colburn looking in front. Can't get it to Camilleri. Flames have to be aware here as Latestu picks it up. But Calgary scramble back into a defensive posture. Mark Latestu from Elk Point, Alberta. Get around Weidman. Butler working over Latestu. Flames come up with a puck. Here's the hero from Monday night, Monaghan. Wisniewski. Get away from him. Hoodler's out there. Puck brought in offside by Boone Jenner. 3.05 to go in extra time. Even with one last player for each team, still not a lot of space out here. Mike Camilleri he turns around very quickly, just misses that far side, and the Flames continue to make things happen as that shot goes from Butler. And Camilleri on the backhand with some very good positioning on the rookie, Ryan Murray. Got the backhand on it, but just to the left of the goaltender Burbosky. DJ Brody slides it cross ice. Backlund will give it to Hoodler. Yuri Hoodler to Brody. Shoots, blocked Cam Atkinson got in front of that one. Now we got a race for it. Anisimov in. Anisimov holds up. Goes to the middle. Stopped by Barra. Puck's there. And Backlund comes back with a good defensive play. They score. Nikitin. 2-1 overtime win for Columbus. The Flames got caught flat-footed in their own end. Great effort at, by the Flames to try and get that puck, but just some missed defensive coverage on that 2-1-2 back up the ice. Bobrovsky comes up with a big couple big saves. Right here's the collision in front. The puck turns over right at this point, and instead of switching, Right here, that's where Schmid has to go all the way over a lot quicker. Brody was back to take the second man. Two great saves. How about a third great save before Nikitin sneaks in? And he loves to play against the Calgary Flames. Nobody's back to pick him up. A late play, Michael Backlund, but nobody picks up Nikitin right here as he, all players are jumping into the offensive zone at that point. First goal of the season is an overtime winner, so the Columbus Blue Jackets able to exercise a few demons, perhaps wash some of that bad taste of their loss last night in Edmonton out of their mouths. Well, the Calgary Flames fail to win back-to-back -back games. They've only done it once this season. They get a chance, to, perhaps, to try again and get a streak going as they take on Florida. Felino in the first, Colburn in the third for Calgary, but Nikitin with the winner as the Blue Jackets outshot 24-18, win 2-1 over the Calgary Flames as we send it now to Connected.